it's not unusual to see the back of an Outlander leaving in a cloud of dust because they've always been pretty sporty. But the familiar face of Mitsubishi's family crossover is also about to disappear as the model gets a makeover. The 2012 Outlander is the third generation of this medium-sized SUV and signals a whole new direction for the manufacturer. For the first time in a decade, Mitsubishi's trademark fighter jet front grille has gone, replaced by a modern nose that shows faint traces of evoked styling. The cabin is a real step up in quality over the previous car too. The old dashboard was a plastic mass of gargantuan proportions and a smooth sloping surface rivaled only in presence by Harry Hill's slaphead. But most surfaces in the latest model are nicely cushioned. So if you're looking for a sporty 4x4 to really make a fashion statement, then the Outlander fits the bill better than ever. There is a growing breed of modern, urban SUVs. 4x4s that have about as much inclination to go paddling about in the mud as an ankle model in Prado. The kind of car that gives the PC lobby nightmares at night. Honest, hard-working greenies who dream of nothing more than a better world. A world where 4x4s are not fashion accessories. A world where chickens can cross the road without having their motives questioned. Yeah, neither one's very likely though, is it? But Mitsubishi know this and they've attempted to do something about it. Better aerodynamics, a more efficient engine and significantly reduced weight help to reduce CO2 emissions from 164 grams per kilogram in this model to 146 grams per kilogram in the new car. Fuel economy has also improved from 44.8 miles per gallon to 50.4 miles per gallon, which should make the Outlander even more palatable. The new generation will be available soon, but at the time of going to air, pricing hadn't been finalised. So, with a few loose ends to tie up, we're going to utilise the Blue Peter tactic. Here's one we prepared earlier. A few months ago, I conducted a very thorough test on the Outlander, and after driving the new one, I'm delighted to report that much of what I said then is still true now. The Outlander shares many of its core characteristics with the Citroen C crossover and the Peugeot 2007. Happily, it looks much better than both. Outlanders have never been rocket propelled, but when you pile on the revs in both generations, they're certainly brisk through the low and mid ranges, which makes life easy in traffic. The latest generation diesel engine develops 148 brake horsepower and 280 pounds per foot of pull, which makes it a very capable car. This, combined with good body control, means that Outlanders always have lots of grip through the bends. Both generations do transmit a few odd vibrations through the steering wheel, but they stay pretty quiet if you keep the revs below 3000 RPM. The firm ride isn't that relaxing, but the Outlander does have MPV rivaling space with bags of room for front seat passengers. The middle three seats also have generous head and leg room, with some well thought out storage spaces dotted around the cabin. Last year, the Outlander proved itself to be a very impressive crossover, and we see no reason to believe that that's about to change. As a package, it had the right ingredients, especially if you're looking for a family car. Now, chances are, if you're interested in one of these, you'll probably already have a couple of those. And more likely than not, a couple of those. 
If so, you'll need practicality, and that's where the Outlander shines. This is a large, comfortable family car that doesn't hang about. It will cope with snow and flooding better than most family vehicles, and it does look reassuringly expensive. Moreover, it's versatile, and it has some very clever features. Like the much larger, more expensive Range Rover, it has a split tailgate for ease of loading. It also has two small, additional seats hidden under the boot floor, although they are a bit on the tiny side. Nevertheless, the Outlander is one of the few cars in this class to offer seven-seat functionality, and you can slide the middle row of seats to adjust the space as required. So this really is a car that's been designed with family functionality in mind. Which brings me to my practical test. Woke up with a Jack Russell at my left nostril. Drove dogs to a beauty spot for a walk where there were no other dogs that the Jack Russell could eat. Took an off-road drive, wrote a review on the Outlander's off-road performance. Took the children to see the ducks on the river. Watched the children feeding the ducks. Watched the ducks eat an entire loaf in seconds. Bought a new loaf to continue feeding ducks. Marvelled at how ducks could still float. Started to write my review on the Outlander's practicality. Developed writer's block. Went for a fast drive in the hope of kicking my only brain cell into gear. Nothing. Tested the car's sound system. Tested the car's navigation system. Stopped the fuel. Went for a walk around Harbington Hall. Met some more ducks. Watched the children feed more ducks. Spent the afternoon looking around the historic building and feeding ducks. Wrote my report on the Outlander's interior refinement. Took the children and their friends for a nice drive using all seven seats. Listened to complaints about the cramped conditions in the fold-away rear seats. Went for a drive to Much Wenlock. Found a building with a brilliantly funny name. Laughed about this funny name all the way home. Did the school run. Refused to do the school run again. Read the Outlander's press pack. Figured out how to configure the car to play music straight from my phone using Bluetooth. Went for a drive to enjoy my new discovery. Stopped to record a piece to camera in the middle of nowhere. Attracted the attention of the locals. Wrote my verdict on the car's economy. Wrote my verdict on the car's performance. Finally worked out how to operate the voice control system. Watched little Tilly enjoying talking to the talking car. Returning to main menu. Took the dog somewhere else quiet for a walk. Watched them hurl themselves to the ground before I had chance to open the lower part of the boot. Rescued a Yorkie from the Jack Russell. Rescued a duck from the Jack Russell. Rescued the Jack Russell from a swan. Loaded the dogs back into the car properly. Took the children for a bicycle ride. Saw a beautiful 1980s Mercedes parked in Arley. Got into a long conversation with its owner about the car. Watched the gentleman get into trouble with his wife for keeping her waiting while we talked cars. Took the family for a picnic in the Outlander. Stopped to look at sheep. Stopped to look at horses. Discovered that the Outlander passes the comfy enough to sleep in test on the way home. Wrote my verdict on the car's looks. Wrote my verdict on the driving position. Found a big scary puddle of mud that you'd be mad to drive through. Drove through the big scary puddle. Wrote a piece about how the Outlander coped with the big scary puddle. Tried to think of any other off-road tests that I'd be brave enough to try with the Outlander. Nothing. Took the children cycling again. Took the dogs walking again. Took more children for an off-road drive. Realised that my test was beginning to sound like a Gordon Ramsay recipe. Two bikes, two dogs, four children, one Outlander. Done. And the moral of this very silly story? Well, actually, there are two of them. Firstly, the Outlander is the perfect addition to an expanding young family. And secondly, if you tend to suffer from tension and headaches, do what it says on the painkiller bottle, take two tablets, and then keep away from children.
So what can we learn from Mitsubishi's latest upgrade? Well, this is certainly the first example of the company's new design strategy, and we can expect to see wraparound headlamps and slim chrome effect grills progressively replacing the edgy, angular styling of previous models. It's also a very clear indication that Mitsubishi is taking its green policies very seriously indeed, and by next year there will be a plug-in hybrid version that we're told will emit just 50 grams per kilogram of CO2, which is pretty impressive for a crossover. So whether you're considering waiting for the new model to go on sale, or possibly picking up one of the existing generations second hand, this is a vehicle that's certainly worth watching. Just remember this, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. But these days, pretty much everything else is made in Japan. And that's because they're good at it.